The Copy Monitor tool within Revit manages object placement and type selection, but does not carry forward any of the instance data. In this example, we'll look at how this can be achieved with ID8 BIMLINK. For our Copy Monitor investigation, we'll start by looking at the data within the Architects model. As we create a new link, we'll want to be sure to use an instance-based link. We can filter the link list to show only the instances and then exclude the structural, electrical, and piping links. Our goal is to take a close look at some of the plumbing fixtures to see how they behave during the copy monitor process. We want to ensure that the mark field, as well as some other important instance parameters, are carried over between this architect's model and the MEP version of these same fixtures when they are copy monitored. We can access additional related parameters via the available properties dropdown, such as the room number and name, which will provide some needed context when we map the data between the two files. For this particular project, we'll also want to include the grab bar and three water closet parameters, which control some of the graphics. Lastly, we'll add the XYZ data. This is a feature that's new to ID8 BIMLINK 2013.2 and is essential to creating our unique database key value. Next, we'll take advantage of another new improvement, the filter tab. For this example, we want to focus only on the ADA plumbing fixtures. We can add a text-based filter to the family type name so that we include only those that contain the word ADA. This limits our export from 88 families down to just 18. Now we're ready to export the data to Excel. We'll name the file Plumbing Fixtures and write out the first tab with the architecture suffix, and then later export similar information from within the MEP version of the file. We'll also need to save the link definition. This creates a small text file that we can import into our MEP file to ensure that the parameter list is the same. We'll switch gears now to the MEP file. To save time, I've already linked in the architectural file and copied the plummy fixtures using the copy monitor tools. As we zoom in, we can see that the copied versions of the toilets look different from the architectural version, which is shown here in set. Using the properties palette, we can see that the mark value as well as the grab bar and other instance parameters differ from the architectural file version. Let's take a look at the BIMLINK data that we exported previously from the architectural file. Notice that the mark values are in the 100s and 200s, and that the grab bar settings vary with each instance. Now we'll use BIMLINK to export the plumbing fixture data from the MEP file to the same Excel file for comparison. First, we'll import the saved link. As this file is an MEP file, we'll need to adjust our room-based data fields to the corresponding space fields. Notice that for the spaces, we can report either the space name and number or, as I'm doing here, the space colon room name and number. These fields are available for spaces when the linked file is set as a room bounding link. Now we're ready to export the MEP plumbing fixture data to our Excel file. The new file has a tab for each of the two exports that we've done so far. In order to map the parameters from the architectural file, we'll need to create a unique key for each element. This is our first step. I've already created the unique key for the architectural elements. Using the XYZ coordinate data, I've concatenated the values into a single string. Because the MEP fixtures will reside in almost the exact same location, I can use this value as a way to connect the objects across the separate files. Once the formula is correct, I can drag the values down for each row of data. Now that we've established the keys, we can begin to map the mark number from the architectural file onto the fixture within the MEP file. We'll use the VLOOKUP function, as shown here. The lookup value in the VLOOKUP function is the MEP key that we've just created. The table array is the range of data that came from the architectural data export. And lastly, the column number 
is 4 because that's where the mark parameter is within the architectural table. It's the fourth column from the left hand side. Before the VLOOKUP function can work properly, we'll need to make sure that the rows are sorted from smallest to largest within the architectural table. As we copy down our VLOOKUP formula, we notice some errors. Upon closer inspection, I realize we've not used the proper syntax for the table array. After adding the dollar sign to prevent the table location from shifting, our cells update as expected. We now have mark values that mirror those within the architectural table. We can now easily transfer this formula to any of the other instance parameters that we'd like to duplicate. We just need to make sure that the proper column number is referenced each time. After copying down the values, we're ready to import the new data back into BIMLINK. BIMLINK will give us detailed information about the changes we are about to make. Up top, we see the preview of the data while below we see any import issues that we may have during the import process. This provides us useful feedback about each change including the ability to save the issues in a log file. As we complete the import process keep your eyes on those fixtures. We've successfully mapped all of the instance parameters from the architectural file into the MEP file. ID8 is an Autodesk authorized developer with 25 years of experience in software development with a specific focus on building information modeling. For complete information about ID8 BIMLINK, please visit our website at www.id8bimlink.com.